Hi everyone, it's GigaBeef here and today we're going to be running through a budget questing loadout that I find myself coming back to over and over again from about level 17, which is when you're able to get both the Flea Market and Ragman 2. And the idea here is we want a loadout that's incredibly cost effective but still gives us the chance of taking down opposing PMCs if the need arises. I might do more of these specific full loadout guides if people like them and this one is more of a long range kit that I use for completing tasks on woods, customs and shoreline where typically you need scav kills but you prefer to keep a decent distance from your targets. This is especially important now that scavs are really strong to keep you away from the random head eyes. Of course, there are many ways to do this, but if we want to target a high survival rate, then we really want to have the ability to penetrate class 4 armor if we run into somebody, and also be suppressed so that we can go about our own business without attracting too much attention. There are only so many rounds in the game that are available at the moment that actually fill this niche, which is why once you reach the flea, 366 AP is actually a proper good round in 1212 when so many people are using class 4 armor. I've been pairing this with the VPO215, the bolt action 366 rifle, because this doubles up to help us level sniper skill which is needed for some quests later on, which is a nice bonus. The other alternative in this calibre is the VPO209, which you can see here. And it's honestly a fine weapon, but the MOA at 2.23 versus 1.55 of the 215 will start to affect its longer range performance. It's more expensive and it doesn't give us anything towards the sniper skill either. When using 366 AP, some people kind of overthink the accuracy debuff of minus 28% because it's a percentage of the existing MOA, which you can see here, so it's not that big of a deal. But as the 215 is more accurate to begin with, it's not as affected, so you get a better performance at distance. You can actually see how this affects the weapons by loading in the rounds here, and you can see that it goes from 1.55 to 1.8. As a point of reference, the standard M4 has a 1.91 MOA, so this is still better than that at range. The loadout goes something like this. For the weapon, as mentioned, we use the VPO215, which we buy from Jaeger, to ensure that we have a 100% durability version for 18,500 rubles. I have seen some research that bolt actions aren't as affected by low durability for accuracy, but we hardly get a discount for it, so we may as well just buy a new one. In terms of modding, we'll grab a suppressor for around 20,000 rubles because they're really cheap for 366 AP, and the 215 has a handy rail already included, which we can mount various optics on. I've been using the Prism 2.5 times with its mount, the compact mount for sights, which is 21,000 rubles together, which is actually pretty good, and you can get the Prism from Skier. But once you have the flea market, there is a lot of choice and there are other ways to go cheaper than this. Some people really hate the Prism, but just use what feels comfortable for you. Usually the cheapest way to get a scope is the Pillad on the 25mm rings for about 14,000 total, but this scope I find quite hard to use as a tiny field of view and lots of black around the outside, which makes it really difficult to use. A hidden gem that I have used in the past but not much this wipe so far is the KMZ rifle scopes, the Gauntlet 1P69 mount, and those will cost you about 17k together. Basically any time that you have a mount in between the scope and the weapon, people often tend to forget about it because it's not as obvious when you're trying to mod the weapon, so you kind of have to know that these ones exist already. This scope gives you a 3 times and a 10 times, which is pretty cool. But the issue is that when you click through the zoom, it also toggles the illumination, so you have to click twice to change the zoom mode, which is really awkward. The same goes for the ACOGs, a lot of people don't really just use these and they share a mount with a prism and they're about 20,000 each as well which is fairly cost effective and they have been made slightly better in the optics refresh that Battlestate did about 6 months ago from the time of this video. A quick tip for those who are new or perhaps forgot, you have to identify the items before they appear in the weapons presets menu, so go through the flea market and middle click on all the items in the category you want to check out. Yes, it's a bit tedious but you only have to do it once and it makes life a lot easier afterwards when you're modding and looking at what fits on what. Back to our gun, we'll be taking two spare mags with us to give us 12 rounds in total, four inside the weapon, one chambered and two spare magazines with four rounds in each for a total of 13 for a one particular firefight without having to reload rounds into the mags directly. For the ammo, as mentioned, we'll be using 366 AP. This is the most expensive part of the kit by far, as it's a high trader level ammo on Mechanic 3, but it's still sold on the flea at the moment, which means it is actually usable by anybody. It tends to be about a thousand rubles around, but because you're not using that much of it, it's actually usable and not too bad. It's not like we're spraying it out of 60 round mags or anything. On headsets, this is personal preference, but I'm using the GSSH currently because I never really had an issue with it in general, although I do prefer the razors, and they're very, very cheap. We won't be using helmet on this loadout because we're not intending to get into any close range firefights, but still definitely wear a face cover of some sort so that you're not as visible. If you're using a balaclava, that's kind of the pure min max version, or you can go for the brand Shamar if you want to look a little bit cooler. Armor wise, I recently did a video running through all of the class 4 armors and I would advise getting a class 4 because this would stop you getting 762 PS by a scav with an AK and a Ragman 2, I'd either use the 6B3TM at 55k cash which is good value or the MMAC barter if you can source the components for less than about 60-65 thousand rubles given it's better than the 6B3TM. 
Meds-wise, I always take a car first aid kit, a separate army bandage from the fleet as this has two uses, and a peacekeeper cat tourniquet as a minimum, plus something one slot in the secure container which we'll talk about in a second in terms of healing. Finally with bags, this is really up to you. On these quest runs, especially if I'm killing scavs, I tend not to be looting that much, so if I have nothing, I might buy an MBS from Ragman for about 12,500 rubles, but you can go bigger if you want to. Now it can be a consideration to bring a sidearm or a secondary of some kind because the 215 can be a little unforgiving if someone does jump you at close range, although the tendency for 366 AP to one-shot people is actually not as bad as you might think, but you might want to take a pistol like the M9 and two mags plus 15 extra rounds of PST if you want, or potentially something like an SKS or maybe even a shotgun. We want to keep the cost down though so I wouldn't go crazy here and often I don't bother. Totaling up what we've looked at so far, without a sidearm, this gets us to 74,500 for the weapon section. It's 18,500k for the 2 on 5, 20k for the suppressor, the optic around 21,000 depending on what you get, magazines are 2,000, and 366 AP that's actually on our person at risk is 13,000 rubles, and that gets us to 74,500. For the other gear, we have the GSSH at 13,000, the Balaclava at 3k, the 6B3TM at 55,000, and the MBS for 12,500 rubles, which comes to 83.5k. Finally, our consumables, we have the car kit at 7k, an army bandage from the fleet at 2k, the tourniquet from Peacekeeper at 2.5k, and that brings meds to 11,500, which takes the overall loadout to 170,000 rubles. As I've talked about in some other videos, once you bring everything into consideration, whole kits tend to look more expensive than we're used to because you don't really consider the full cost of everything like meds, bags, headsets, that kind of thing. We normally have those lying around. In the more traditional sense, the weapon build alone is only 60k, but it gets to 75,000 because we explicitly add the mags and the rounds that we take at risk inside it as well. That being said, it is quite difficult to put together a kit that's cheaper than this that includes class 4 armor, a scope, a suppressor, and the ability to deal with class 4 armor yourself if the need arises. Also, remember that the majority of this loadout will come back if you die. Expect to lose the Optic and the Suppressor, but the 6B3TM, GSSH, VPO215, these guys will return all the time. It's very cheap to ensure the entire loadout, so if you plan on using it a few times over multiple sessions, it's really not as bad as it looks at first. Now onto secure containers. Our rounds are the most expensive resource that we're using here, so they definitely get a slot. 366 AP stacks to 50, and you're very unlikely to run out of those with the Balti, so that's fine as one space. Standard account players will only have three more squares to use at this point, which typically I would place an AFAC into, or an IFAC if you don't have one, as emergency healing. This lets you go into raid with the bare bones of medkits, and use the secure meds when they are really needed. The beauty of these two meds, the IFAC and the AFAC, is that you have the ability to heal a heavy bleed with them. Yes, it uses a lot of their durability, but it's not necessary all the time, but when you need it, you really need it. The other two spaces are up for debate, but personally I would have an alu splint in one as this has five uses, and a multi-use painkiller in another such as ibuprofen, vaseline or golden star. This lets you fix any breaks and carry on as normal, and also gives you the option to walk normally to the extract even over a long distance if your legs get shot out and you have no other way to repair yourself. The alternative to this is you could put a two slot CMS kit in to fix black limbs, but then you need to put splints somewhere else. I've had two breaks in single raids frequently enough to worry about it because if you can't fix it, you then also have to put the pain meds somewhere else too, otherwise you'll be wandering around with awful blurry pain effect all over your screen. There's a ton of different ways to do it, so if you have a favourite way of stacking your secure container that's an alpha, then please let me know down in the comments because it's always insightful to see exactly how people min max this stuff. EOD secure containers are much easier as you might imagine with 9 slots rather than 4 and I tend to go with a CMS, an alley splint, an AFAC, a fast painkiller such as a morphine on the cheap or propital for the healing boost and then spare rounds in one slot and food and water one slot items in the other two. Overall this kit is kind of fun, it's not really a meta kit or anything but it allows you to cheaply skulk around getting stuff done which is honestly what the bulk of early work Tarkov is like but you can put up a fight when things get hairy. I'll be using a modified version as usual on Factory for Tarkov Shooter 3, which is kill 3 PMCs under 25 meter with bolt actions, obviously without the scope and the suppressor, but do not underestimate the power of 366 AP when 99% of the player base is using class 4 armor. It really doesn't mess around. If you learned something in today's video, as always consider dropping a like or a comment to help out the channel. I also stream on Twitch, usually on a Saturday, but you can keep up to date with my movements on Twitter or come chat to me on our Discord. With all that said, I'll see you next time, and as always, have fun in your raids. Where's he going?
Woohoo! There we go, boys. There's one. <laughs>